I've got one question. When's part two then? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends when the next one is. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, it, the system buyers are a funny beast and it can take it can take a while to kind of get your head around it. It certainly took me a good few reads of the, uh, the advanced user guide. And it's, um, yeah, I, I think we, we deserve to spend a good bit of time on that uh, and how to use the interrupts in it. But uh, I think as a starting point, it's kind of good to understand kind of what they are and, and how they work normally, because there's, there's several different ways that we can kind of heart, hook into the VIA. We can use a, an interrupt handler, uh, the one I've described, uh, or actually sometimes you don't need an interrupt handler at all. Uh, you can do things quite manually. You can kind of pull the buyer and interact and interface directly with the buyer to sort of achieve the same thing. But um, I think just sort of understanding how interrupts uh, work within the system is a good starting point. Um, and then we'll sort of go on to um, setting up the buyer next time. I was just going to ask, is this, this presumably works the same way on the electron? Are the sort of the vectors in the same kind of location on the electron? Do you know? Ooh, good question. I think the vectors are, yes. But obviously, hmm, I don't know enough about the electron motion. That's a great question. Yeah, the, the vectors are in the same location, but you, you inter, your interrupt sources are less interesting. Yes. Okay. So I think you get, you you've, you've got VTIC interrupt, and you've got another interrupt at line 100, and you've got set interrupts, and I think that's it. Because there's no vias, right? No. Yeah, I guess everything goes through the the, the EULA, I guess. Okay, thanks. Thank you, and you said um, that uh, the interrupt routine should be written to be re-entered. Mm -hmm. But if you get an interrupt within an interrupt, then won't you get the stack overflow? Um, well, I guess you could do eventually. Um, yeah, hopefully you're not pushing too much on the stack. No, Depends how many start, interrupts you get. Yeah, when you start with pushing in accumulator, then uh, it won't be pulled. I mean, you'd have to have quite a lot of interrupts within interrupts before you uh, run out of uh, before you run out of stack. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's always a possibility. There's only a fixed amount of stack. Um, regarding the stack, um, is that the same when you're pushing stuff on the stack in an interrupt? Is that the same stack that you would use in your program if you were pushing something onto the stack? I guess it is. Is it? Yes. Yeah. There's yeah. only one stack. So okay. uh, again. But because we're because we're single threaded, right? You can't you can't execute two things at the same time. So it's okay as long as we. That's why it's so important. You've got to unwind exactly the same yeah. back to exactly the same point, right? So we we end up with the system at least as far as the running program is concerned that nothing nothing's happened. Right? So yeah. Okay. So even if you have nested time. interrupts, once they've all unwound in reverse yeah. order, you end back exactly where you were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The stack's two hundred and fifty six bytes. Most of that's free most of the time, and it interrupts three bytes. So you know you can fit eighty odd of them on there. But yeah. you've got eighty nested interrupts. You probably got something else wrong. Pro providing <laughs> yes. your program isn't using a lot of stack space, I guess. <laughs> yeah, unless uh, unless you're doing some cunning sort of exile style trick to uh, push all your uh, graphics on the stack and then pull them pull them back up again in a different order, then. Uh, yeah, you're probably okay for stack space usually. And especially if, if, you, if you can be clever and not use X or Y um, in your interrupt handler, then you don't need to stack X or Y. Yes. That, that saves you a, a bit of time, especially on a 6502 where you don't have PHY, PHX. Yeah, absolutely. And quite often if you're just looking to, um, say you just want to increment a counter on VSync, or some sort of flag on a timer, then yeah, again, you don't need to uh, you don't need to use X and Y. Yeah, it's a bit annoying that you lose 27, 28 cycles to the OS when an interrupt happens. Yes. It's better if it jumps straight through that vector, really. Yeah. Straight to a bit then, of code there like the NMI does. Yeah, again, I guess it's 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 important to know that that happens, but at least it's fixed, right? It's a fixed um, uh, and predictable yeah. amount of time. Just one but one clock extra on the master. Yeah, so you can you can account for that. Um, so yeah. Yes, if you were doing like one per scan line to change the font, change the font, change the palette, then uh, 
it's a noticeable expense. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. What actually happens if the stack does overflow? Does it um, just wrap around or do you get some sort of, I don't know. What? The stack point is eight bits, right? So I presume it just wraps around and everything goes okay, back. Okay, you start overwriting stuff, okay. Yeah, it just wraps around. In my OS temp ROM, OS test ROM, I actually just use a stack pointer as a spare register. <laughs> as a temporary register to know which section of code I was in. <laughs> it doesn't use any RAM. Okay, and I, I think what I was getting confused with is um, the difference between events and interrupts. Um, specifically that, that Repton 2 music we were talking about earlier, it seems to key off a event, but yeah. then it seems to set up IRQ2, but it seems to set it up every time. I don't know, I haven't got the code off hand, but it seems a bit weird. So that's mm, what's yeah. confusing me between events and interrupts. Yeah, we should, again, we should probably do a, we do a similar sort of intro to events. I mean, events are probably the simplest way to hook into various parts of the, uh, the OS. I mean, that's kind of what it's designed for. So there's like a key press event, there's, another, there's uh, the vSync event. Uh, and they are, they're derived from interrupts, but it's sort of an easier to manage way. And um, you can turn them on and off with, um, with uh, star FX commands and things like that. So they're sort of just easier to, to manage, but underneath the hood, they're all sort of driven by the, the interrupts in the, in the MOS handler. Um, but they're just a bit more straightforward to, to look into. But, um, right, okay, yeah. So for instance, like music is one, if you're only doing music playback in the background, then it's probably simpler to just hook off the vSync event rather than worrying about um, uh, messing about with sort of setting up IRQs, cues, particularly if you wanted to run alongside basic or something like that. It's just a sort of less intrusive way of, uh, of hooking into something that the, the OS is already doing. Yeah, sure. Mm. Now I'll, I'll have to look at the code again then to see what it's doing with that interrupt after the event triggers. Um, no, it just seems a bit weird to me. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, have a look. If it doesn't make sense, just post it up and we'll, we'll, we'll break it down. Brilliant. Thank you. Here's. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's. Flipple's code as well. It's the same thing. Maybe, maybe somebody didn't quite get the chapter. I'm just looking at the code. What it seems to be doing is it, um, is it hooks into the vSync event and then it um, sets up on the user BIA timers for delay. Um, which is why it's setting the intro vector at that point. And then the music code actually runs in that in that IOQ in the um in the RQ handler triggered by that timer. Ah, uh, right. on, on the user via. Yeah. So, so, so it's, it's, it's running every 50 hertz, but the timer just means it doesn't actually run, the music player doesn't actually run at VSync. It runs a bit later. Uh, so it's it's kind of timing the speed of the music. No, it's this is so that um, this is so that it, it runs at the um, regular VSync rate, fifty hertz, but it doesn't run during blanking. I guess it's so. okay. Yeah, blanking is going to be precious time to to update the screen without any uh, without the raster being visible, right? So. Yes, yeah, so I think that's what it's doing. You might as well update the music in the middle of the screen. Well, exactly. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Oh. It's, it's a bit odd that it's setting up the interrupt vector on every recent event. Oh, that's that what could, I thought. That, that could be optimised. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I did optimise it a bit, but I, I can't remember what I did with it in the end, but it did seem a bit weird. Oh. 
unless it points it to different routines depending on what it's doing. Oh God! <laughs> but still, updating it every frame is a bit excessive. Yeah. I think um, yeah, when you get to part two, that might be um, that might be of interest. I know I've got issues with the, the the screen time and all that, but also that music code on Nick. Just whether to sanity check that to see if that he's doing it the correct way. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I tried to um, I tried not to spend too long putting the slides together. I think it was maybe a couple of hours, uh, sort of one pass, and then I got a bit of feedback and then just updated. Because again, I didn't want it to be something that if different people are presenting different things over time, didn't want it to be something that required sort of vast amounts of, of prep time. I'd say a lot of this is just sort of condensed from um, parts of the user guides, uh, the advanced user guide. But obviously I've spent a lot of time reading the advanced user guide at various points, so I kind of know what I'm looking for in the bits I want to pull out of it. Um, but yeah, hence why it's sort of fairly word text heavy rather than having lots of nice diagrams or anything like that. So, yeah, hopefully a sort of a reasonable reference as well. Um, I'll, I'll work with Dave and, and get a PDF of the slides and we can put them somewhere. Excellent. Good stuff.